In this video, we're going to learn how to use the count function in C++, which allows us to count the number of times a value occurs in a range, such as an array or a vector. The first thing we'll do is include the library algorithm where the count function is defined. We'll also include the vector library so we can make a vector. Then down here, We'll declare an array of ints with int array is equal to, and we'll have one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, one, two, and three. Next, we'll call the count function to count the number of times that two occurs in this array. And the count function is going to return the count. So we'll declare an int variable called count two to store that return value. And then we'll call count and we pass it the array, and the array plus the length of the array, and then the value we want to count. So we'll have two here for the value that we want to count. Then we can output the count returned by the count function. So we'll have C out, and then two's colon, followed by count two, and then an end line. And if we save compile and run the program, we get a two's count of three, and that is correct because we have one two, another two, and then a third two. So that's how the count function is going to work. So the third argument to the function is the value that we want to count. And the first and second arguments to the function are iterators that specify the range in which we want to count that value. So array here is technically a pointer to the first element in this array. And array plus 10 is giving us a pointer to an element that is 10 elements ahead of that element. That's technically one past the last element in the array here. And count is going to count the elements in the range of our start iterator up until but not including the end iterator. So in this example here, we'll count the number of occurrences of two between the start iterator and the end but not including the end. And array and array plus 10 are technically pointers, but in C++, pointers are iterators. So we can use count to count the number of occurrences of a value in any type of range. So for example, we could count the number of occurrences of a value in a vector. Let's declare and initialize a vector to store ints. We'll have here vector and then int, and we'll call this vector test. And we'll store into this vector the values 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we'll call the count function with this vector. We'll have int count 1, and we'll count the number of 1s in this vector. And there's only 1 right here. So we'll have is equal to count, and we'll have test.begin and test.end and one. Then we'll output the count of ones with C out and then ones colon followed by count one followed by an end line. And if we save compile and run the program, we get a ones count of one and that is correct. Now the vector member function begin is going to return an iterator to the first element in the vector and the vector member function end is going to return an iterator to the sort of hypothetical element that is one past the last element in the vector. So altogether, this call to count is going to count the number of occurrences of the value one that occur in this vector between the first element in the vector and the last element in the vector. Now more accurately, we can say the count function is going to count the number of elements that compare equally to the third argument. So if we use the equality operator to compare the third argument and an element, do they compare equally or not? That's really what the count function is going to count. We can make a class with an overloaded equality operator to see this effect. We could have here class square and we'll define a simple class for geometric squares. We'll have public 
we'll have a member variable inside for the side length of the square. Then we'll have a constructor that accepts a side length int value. And we're going to set that side member variable to the side value that's provided to the constructor. And then we'll overload the equality operator. So we're going to define how squares are going to be equal when compared using the equality operator. So we'll have bool operator equals equals. Then we'll have const square and we'll have and square a where this here is how we overload the equality operator. The function is expected to return true or false, whether this square here is equal to the square it's being compared to. And that const square in square a is a const reference to that other square. And we'll compare the side lengths of the two squares to determine whether or not the squares are equal or not. So we're going to return if the side length of this square is equal to the side length of the other square with return side is equal to square a dot side. Now we can use the count function with square objects. So down here, let's make a vector of square objects. We'll have here vector square to create a vector that's going to store squares. We'll call it squares and we'll initialize it with some squares. We'll have square two, and then we'll have square three, and square three, and then we'll have one more with square one. So now we have a vector with four square objects inside of it. And then we'll create another square object. We'll have here square two count, is equal to square three. So here we have a square object with a side length of three. Now let's use the count function. We'll have int count three is equal to count. And again, we'll have squares.begin and squares.end and we'll have to count. And so what's going to happen is that our overloaded equality operator is going to be used to compare this square with these squares in the vector. And what count is going to return is the number of squares in this vector that are equal to this square here. So we could output that result. We could output squares with side equal to three. And we'll output count three followed by an end line. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we find that there are two squares in that vector that have a side length equal to three. And that is correct. So this is how we can use the count function in C++ to count the number of elements in a range that compare equally to a value. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.